Betty and Steve, I work with Sun, Wine, and Spirits. I think I met most of you. Yay, Steve! So it's a special night tonight. We have a very special guest from Italy. We have a brand ambassador from Rufino Winery, Beppe D'Andrea. Yay! He's going to talk. He's going to talk for a little while about the history of the winery first, and then as each course comes out, he'll talk about the wine that we're pairing with that course. So, without further ado, Pepe. So, thank you everyone uh, hosting me this night. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here in Phoenix with you. Um, I represent Rufino. I'm so proud to be here representing Rufino. Rufino, you know, is a winery that was established in Tuscan 1877. But a long time ago, uh, wine was not important like it is now. Uh, wine in Italy, and uh, she knows she's from Italy, uh, wine was a part of the nutrients. People needed to drink wine because the food was very <laughs> simple. The Italian food is uh, still simple, based in the South Italy, mm -hmm. on the pasta, pizza, North Italy is a risotto, polenta. In Tuscany, in my region, uh, most of the, uh, the cuisine is based on the bread and vegetables, like soup. Ribollita, panzanella, pappa al pomodoro, very simple uh, ingredients, but not too many calories. And the people at that time worked in the fields. So they, the, especially the males, they left uh, early in the morning, maybe sunrise, and they came back home and sunset, and uh, they had just a big dish of uh, soup or maybe pasta, and that's it, no calories. It is why wine was important, because uh, drinking wine, the people, they got calories. Just to tell you that um, my generation, you know, people now in Italy are still uh, good drinkers, uh, but the consumption, we are 60 million people, the consumption per person per year is around 10 gallons of wine. <laughs> but if we are going back, maybe just in the 1970s, not very long time ago, we were 40 gallons, 40 gallons. It, it seems that people had to drink a lot of wine because the wine uh, was very important as a nutrient. Of course, the wine was uh, completely different. It was uh, lower in alcohol, higher in acidity. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, when the people who made, was a vin d'un anno, wine per one year, not for aging. They were not interested in aging wine. They just made wine, and then the wine had to, you know, uh, to be good, maybe sometime was uh, in August, next August was already vinegar, but they had to drink wine just for a year. It was the tradition of the time. Why this? Because most of the people were workers of the fields, were uh, working in agriculture, but they didn't get money at the end of the month, but they got a part of the production. It was the Italian style. So, uh, one family, they got, they take care of a piece of land, and in this land they had to grow everything, because the production, half was for uh, the family, the worker, and half was for the owner of the field. For that, also, if there were maybe four chickens, two for the owner and two for, and they couldn't eat cows, be steak, a T-bone steak, because they need a cow to work in the field, so they need help for that they couldn't uh, get ca too much calories. And uh, so for that, people were very simple. Um, uh, the food was very simple. And uh, the two cousins, Ilario and Leopoldo Ruffino, was uh, 1877. They created, they established the winery with a different idea, to make wine for business. Because uh, some, of, some people, especially in Italy, in Rome, in Milan, in Napoli, in Venice, and then in some European cities, they needed to drink, but they didn't make wine. It is why they started making Chianti. It was the first wine, Chianti Ruffino, and then they shipped wine in those big cities. But in the same time, at the end of 1800, many families from Italy, so they came in uh, North America, especially Northeast of the uh, United States. 
New York, New Jersey, uh, uh, Massachusetts. For that, the wine, the Rufino wine, followed the emigrants to the North America. It was the beginning you know, of, uh, of uh, the life of the Rufino wine. Then, of course, Rufino expanded their interest, uh, investing money in some other vineyards. And uh, right now, Rufino has uh, seven big uh, uh, estates in Toscana, where we make mainly red wines. And one estate is located in uh, Northeast Italy, where we make uh, Pinot Grigio, but also we have, and now we introduce the wine we are drinking, Prosecco wine. Prosecco is a wine made uh, in Northeast Italy. And uh, uh, you know, the grape of Prosecco actually is a Glera, it's not Prosecco grape, but it's a Glera, G-L-E-R-A, Glera. This grape uh, grew up in a, a town uh, called Prosecco. Prosecco is a town near Trieste, near the borderline uh, with, uh, with Slovenia, and it was a very rustic <laughs> wine. At the end of 1800, uh, around the end of 1800, in northeast Italy, was a phylloxera. With phylloxera, you know, was a disease that destroyed the part of the vineyards. And the vineyards of the North Italy, of that region, Northeast Italy, were based on the ribolla gialla, schioppettino, refosco dal peduncolo rosso, very strange names for you, Tokai grape, but everything was destroyed by phylloxera. Rich families of that region, Northeast Italy, they went in the south of France, where they had the same problem of phylloxera, but earlier. So then you know, the, uh, the vines were grafted on uh, American stock and then, you know, they could restart making wine. That's right. But the, f and the f so, the, uh, uh, f those f rich, f rich fam uh, families, they import in Northeast Italy, Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, French varietals, Merlot, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc. But the poor family, the simple families that were the most, uh, you know, part of the population, they couldn't spend money because they had money, so they replaced the vineyards with the Galera grape. This grape was uh, the indigenous grape, was a resistant to the phylloxera, but the type of wine was very, uh, you know, rustic, not a good wine, actually. But they just need to drink for that. For them, it was a, was a perfect wine. Wine was not sparkling, was a still wine. Probably then, asking where this wine is from, or maybe where the grape is from, Prosecco, they forgot the name Glera, and people just remember Prosecco grape, but actually, it's right, it's perfect, but the grape, the real grape, the name is Glera. 1960s, somebody decided to make something better by the Glera wine, making sparkling wine with the Charmat method, and they made for the first time a Prosecco. It was in 1960s. Actually, Rufino makes a Prosecco since a long time ago, but not for this market. It was only for a domestic market. Then our partner and our you know, owner, Constellation, they import, uh, decided to import Prosecco here in the United States. So we had to source juice uh, uh, that in the place, and, uh, and then we could import also here in the United States Prosecco. You know, Prosecco is a wine made in a very limited region, especially in a town near where this lady grew up, Treviso, there is the area of Prosecco. I in the, in the uh, Clinton and the Merlot. Uh, exactly, Please. also other grape. And, uh, and now Prosecco are two different appellations. Prosecco DOCG, if it's made in a very small region, Conegliano and the Val do Biadene, or uh, Prosecco DOC, if the wine is made in a larger region, is uh, Veneto and uh, Friuli. And this is uh, the DOC, DOC wine made in a larger region. Now I'm seeing that the great uh, uh, tomato and the mozzarella is arriving on the table. So I, I uh, wish you a great dinner. I would like to tell you again, thank you for asking me. I will be back uh, after this uh, telling some stories about wine, Italy and uh, what's happened and what's happening. <laughs> I think you've done this before, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs>